To be honest guys, it was short, but it was good. Welcome to the last Konosuba Fantastic Days video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be wrapping up this kind of kind of like a final review kind of thing. Honestly, I've had a good run and I have a plenty of like good thing to say about it, to be honest. I think it's a great game. It's just like circumstances don't really allow me to, I guess, commit my time to it. And so I wanted to finish all of it off with kind of like a final review because I have a lot of good things to say about this game. There are most definitely a couple of issues, but for the most part, like I actually really liked this game. I think this was a great break from like a lot of my usual games, especially like Princess Connect or like PGR. Alchemy Stars and all of that and honestly I wasn't planning to take on Konosuba. I think I've warned you guys every single video and like this is the day. The day has come guys. But with that being said I do want to emphasize that I am not dropping this game because I don't like it or it's crap. Again if I wasn't already playing Princess Connect, if I wasn't already playing like freaking four or five other games I would actually be taking this guy on. And so yeah guys do not be discouraged if you like this game you like this game and I completely get why. And if you guys don't like it I also completely get why as well because there are uh, it's it's not for everybody. Body. Let's put it that way, right? Okay, and so with that being said, let's take kind of a structured approach to this video. So I want to talk about what I really liked about it and what I don't like about it and then where we're going from here. And so to start things off, I want to talk about this guy over here. And essentially, this is what I well, it represents what I really like about this game right now. It's funny because it's published by Nexon, right? And a lot of the time, Nexon is typically associated with greed or like incompetency or like really RNG style, just stuff like that, right? However, I feel like the dev team behind Conifan has done a really good good job they have just like showered everybody and it's just like yeah there's, there's another 500 quartz let me head over to the gift box and let's see what's in here or oh, probably just 500 quartz yeah but i just think that they've gone off to such a strong start like they've gotten like what 1 million downloads and they just kept like the gems pouring they just kept it coming obviously this could definitely just be the honeymoon phase however like it's just a great first impression right there are some other games that just did not give this kind of impression like i'm talking about especially punishing gray raven punishing gray raven the developers did not really instill confidence within me like there was so stingy they're like actually uh screw you guys kind of thing you know but as for conifan or nexon like i blink and they give me 500 gems i breathe and everybody gets another 500 gems and so yeah generally speaking i think it is quite generous however i cannot speak for like the future but that is one of the things i definitely do like and would like to praise the game and the developers for the next thing i want to talk about is the performance the performance is honestly insane like we've got so many 3d models like look at that and then a little bit of interaction Ugh, i mean could you call it live 2d or is this live 3d but either way like like the production value is insane everything is voiced like and then there's like a little bit of interactions here and there but on top of that we've also got a bunch of all of this story right and so this is reminiscent of pretty con but like it's, it's just really really freaking good you can really tell that the developers have like put a lot of time and effort into all of this not only is the production value insane like you got just like voice acting and then you got like the great models and then you got like a whole bunch of episodes for a lot of the different characters as well as the main story and all of that and like oh my god like it's just so freaking good Good. Personally, when I play this game, I feel like the people who develop this game are fans of Konosuba. Either that or they're just really good at making me feel like it. So yeah, production value insane. I haven't seen overly many localization issues. And then just on that, like that scrolling, oh my god, it's silky smooth. Like look at that. I can't hop on about this performance enough. This is just such a breath of fresh air, especially coming from like Precon and Alchemy Stars. Like Alchemy Stars in particular is locked, frame rate locked rather, to 30 FPS. And this guy is probably running at 130 FPS. If not okay let's just say 60 at least right but yeah the performance is absolutely great okay so guys the next thing i want to talk about is the teams right so the teams it's a very very traditional uh team system so i'm talking like the elemental stuff you got fire beats grass which beats water which beats yeah, so on and so forth right and then on top of that you've also got the dark beats light and then the vice versa however what is a little bit more unique is these guys down here so like the subsystem as well as these equipments it's really the subsystem that i quite like and it's because like if it feels like no characters really go unused or rather like there's not really any wasted investment right so for example this sealer over here we've got the green sealer even after boosting up my sealer to max level however if we fight like a boss that's a different color the sealer is actually still relevant in the form of substats right so for the first event we had the troll boss which did the um the green damage the leaf earth wind sorry it's actually wind i believe and so like we had to use the red sealer and like my green sealer did help it did contribute to the team dps and like the overall healing and everything simply by existing and so yeah this whole sub dps system it just feels like there's not really any wasted characters on the other hand all of the equipment and stuff like it's really really straightforward i quite like that it's like okay p attack m attack and then you get like a probably a special ability yeah there's not much to say about it like generally speaking everything is really straightforward and i really like that and what i love the most is that 
that the fact that like the mono teams are kind of meta, like especially uh, I think in my last video I talked about oh man, why is Melissa or why is Iris or Chris why are they so highly rated in meta when like you really need to build like mono teams? And I do like that quite a fair bit because like it really encourages like the low rarity units to be able to clear their corresponding element content. For example, we had the Cecily over here, we had the Fire Sealer, and then we had the Megumin. However, this Megumin was not required. A lot of people did say like this three star Megumin is definitely comparable to that four star Megumin. And that's honestly like a really great feeling. The fact that you can probably clear a lot, if not most of the content with like low rarity units, assuming that you build smartly. But yeah, this is a really standard system. It's pretty nice. It is, but again, it is quite standard. And I just really want to praise out of all of that, like this subsystem. And so with that being said, let's move on to the last thing, which is the gacha recruitment. And honestly, this is probably one of the best parts of the game. And so what I want to talk about here is this boy over here, which is the 4% rates. So this guy over here, rates. And so as you can see, the four star rate is at 4% all of the time. And then when there is like the festival time, I believe, I don't know if it doubles. I think it goes to 6%. But by just even having 4% for like your highest rarity units, it just feels really great because like generally speaking or statistically speaking, you're going to be like, you're going to be okay. Out of a hundred pulls, you're going to get like four of the four stars and that's going to feel pretty good. And what's even nicer is that dupes are not really like a hundred percent required. There are definitely ways to get around the dupe system. So for example, like getting those potions, if we remember. So I'm just talking about these guys over here, which can be used to increase the skill level. And these boys are actually acquired from like so many different ways. I'm talking events. I'm talking like that adventure metal exchange thing. But I just love the fact that like once you get one, it's kind of like you've got a lot of the character already. You've got like 80% of the character and any dupes that you get will upgrade their skills and stuff. But like, it's not like it's 100% required. But yeah, this whole upgrade skill system, as well as handling the dupes and that gacha, the 4% for four stars. I love it. I freaking love to see it. However, we can't just talk about all of the good things in the game. And so let's start talking about what I didn't like so much. But again, I do want to emphasize that I did like this game a lot. Okay, so let's start off with the first thing. So that's the smithy over here. Oh man, this equipment grind is pretty crazy, my guys. And so I'm just looking at the guys over here and like the grind for each of these weapons or even the accessories, all of it, the grind, the treadmill, it's it's a lot without the skip tickets which is another good thing about the game like without these skip tickets like it'd be really hell to actually grind it out and i don't know about you guys but like as a launch player i ran out of skip tickets like really really fast and because we were bombarded with like a whole bunch of stamina like i did not skip ticket a lot of it i actually had to manually click every single time just to like run a stage over and over that to be honest like is really freaking annoying right especially when the gear grind or like rather the gear requirement for the event was like really really high and so yeah that kind of brings me to my next point so i don't know i think it's the kraken boss right now but it, like back when it was the orc boss or like was it an orc oh a troll okay it was a troll so back on this boss it was actually just brutal it was absolutely brutal i really wish that they didn't start these events until maybe like a week or two later or something like that because it would have actually given like the launch players a little bit of time to like kind of farm up kind of like just kind of get accustomed to the game because i don't know about you guys but it was a crazy scram for like those green earrings for those wind earrings as well as like building up your fire characters and like this and that right i personally feel like the difficulty was okay it's just that like i think the launch players needed a little bit more time like i was whining about the gear grind just then but like it's not really that bad especially because like once you've gotten a set of them or you've gotten the pieces you required like you're kind of done right so for example that orc oh sorry that troll boss over there that troll boss made me craft like a whole bunch of these green earrings right the wind or rather the cyclone earrings earrings and because i've got these cyclone earrings now like these earrings are gonna last me through like all of the wind or rather the content where i require wind resistance and it's good i like that like the fact that i can just grind out five of these and then i'm kind of done for a while until i can actually farm out like these boys over here but i think that the issue was that the gear grind combined with like the urgency of this boss event like we only had i think like eight days to do it i think all of that combined just made like a really rushed experience and i wasn't like overly fond of that however again once you're like finished with the gear grind like so these green earrings and then you've gotten like for example a set of all of these different elements you're actually pretty set and then it's probably going to be like smooth cruising from there so on that note i don't think i was actually complaining about the gear grind i think i was complaining the fact that like we have so little time to finish the boss event but we also needed to, to do like this gear grind as well on top of it so it's the fact that we had to do them together and it was just like such compressed timelines that was probably like making me not really it's not really hating the game but like it was just really uncomfortable right but yeah aside from 
from that, like the gear system, like again, the gear system is quite nice. You only have to build out a couple of things a couple of times. I think it's just the early game grind that is going to be like really exhausting. But like once you're done with it, we're good. And so with that being said, I want to talk about our end game content, I suppose, for Connor Fun, which is like more than likely the arena over here. Yeah, you're going to be clearing events. Everybody's going to be clearing events and stuff. However, I think where the true end game is, is this battle arena. This arena system is okay. Like it's decent. Uh, what I've noticed, I think, is that there are a bunch of hackers on the rankings, if I'm not wrong. I don't know if Nexon has dealt with this. Like traditionally, I've played a couple of Nexon games, right? I've played Maple Story. I've played uh, Raytheon, which is a really old game. But yeah, like generally speaking, Nexon has been quite good in terms of like exposing hackers, banning them, and then also like publishing them out to shame them. I think that's a great way to do things. However, this is like a mobile game. And so it is going to be a little bit different for us here. I'm just hoping that if there are any hackers here, which it kind of looks like there is, like this will be addressed hopefully in the near future. Because the issue is not that the hackers are actually getting these items because hopefully eventually they'll be banned. But the real issue is that the hackers are going to be taking up slots that the legit players could be actually occupying instead. And so what this means is that like a whole bunch of the other legit players are getting less rewards than they should have been if these hackers did not exist. But yeah, hopefully Nexon gets something together, like some kind of algorithm to actually see like potentially maybe possible damage. You know what? I'm going to stop like trying to solution for them and they can figure it out themselves. But with that being said, let's actually go into the arena itself. Maybe we can talk about combat too. So what do we got this time? We've got dark physical attacks and haze attacks. Oh boy. Okay. It looks like a Dullahan guy. Oh wait, I think that is Dullahan. Wait, let's click on him. Yeah, he is a Dullahan. Oh, I remember this guy from the anime. He was pretty funny. Verdia. All right. So let's actually get into the game and I want to talk a little bit about the combat system. I don't know if this is going to fly. Maybe like something like that. I've got a healer. I've got Chris. Yeah, this will do. I should probably have a Mega Min in there somewhere, but it's okay. Let's just get on with it. And so let's talk about the combat system because this is something that I actually liked. I think I liked the combat system more than I didn't like it, right? And so this is really tough because like, oh, uh, does this pause the game? No, it doesn't pause the game. Okay, so this is like this whole active combat system thing. Like it's actually not a full auto game. It's actually, there's a lot going on here. And so like, I feel like a lot of people completely dismiss this game because they're like, oh, it's auto and that's kind of it like granted a lot of the time auto is probably going to play better than you but like that's not always the case right you can do things you can actually do things here whereas you can't really in princess connect and so yeah like i feel like this is also interesting like this whole active battle time system like this just really uh, it there's a lot of possibilities that you can do you can actually manual it to gain like wider control over your team so that you can possibly possibly play better than manual it's just i feel like there are a lot of strategies potential strats that can definitely come out oh i should not have done that so yeah i should not have done that anyway yeah i just feel like um there's a oh my god okay i feel okay maybe i'm not prepared for this oh i probably need that poison resist that's probably what I'm missing. Yeah, I feel like this is just a good system, but a lot of people are not appreciating it. Oh god, there goes my Melissa. Okay, all right, we are on the last boss, and like, yeah, this is this is kind of it. There's not much left to it, right? Yeah, I, again, I like this system because I feel like there is a higher degree of control. You can do a lot of things with it, but I don't feel like it was really appreciated when a lot of people came into the. Oh my god. People just getting chunked. Sorry, I just feel like people didn't appreciate it because like they saw the auto button and then it, it kind of does play like an auto game. Like you just let it run. And then most of the time, like 80% of the time, you will get to where, where you want to be, right? And then sometimes you might want to like just do a little bit of manual just to get it going, right? So for the troll boss, for me, like the manual didn't work. I uh, sorry, the auto just didn't work, right? I had to manual it and I had to manual for four hours before I could actually defeat that freaking boss, which is so freaking weird. Anyway, Anyway, in summary, like I personally thought that the battle system was really nice, but like I completely get why some people didn't like it. All right, new high score. Yeah, yeah, silver three is what I'm talking about. Hmm. And so with that little arena battle done, I do kind of want to talk about like this end game, I suppose. And like, how do I say this nicely? Um, I'm just not fond of it, right? That really is it. And I don't think it's like a good or a bad thing. Like I think a lot of people do like boss battles. However, it's just like for me personally, like having these three challenges a day, doing this as arena, I actually think that this is a really cool way to do a kind of PVP, I guess, or like a, it's a really interesting take on battle arena. However, it feels like this is the only end game there is. And like, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that there is like a little bit more to come, but just like generally speaking, what are we going to do? We're going to farm up gear. We're going to go like farm event bosses and then we're going to kill like battle 
arena every freaking day. And then that's kind of your end game loop, right? There's not really any guild system or anything. But then again, that's kind of like all gachas. And so I don't know if that really is like could be considered true criticism. But yeah, like battle arena, I like it, but like I got bored of it pretty fast. I just ordered it and then I called it a day. But I know that if I actually like, you know, try harder and sweated, it would it probably would be pretty fun. But yeah, I think that summarizes my thoughts on battle arena pretty well. And honestly, I think that's really it as to what I don't really like about this game. Like honestly, again, guys, I really, really like this game. I personally think that all of the positives outweigh the negatives. I think that like it's just a really, really fun game in terms of like there's so much story, there's so much production value and like there's actually skills and tactics that you can apply in a game mode such as arena or like events. For me personally, I just don't have space for this guy in my life right now and I don't think I will in the foreseeable future. But if I had picked this game up before I picked up like Princess Connect, I there's a strong possibility that I would have stuck with this one instead of Precon. But I was always a big fan of Precon as well and I think like from an IP point of view, I'm just going to pick Precon. I like Konosuba. I've watched like season one of Konosuba but I'm not like a massive, massive diehard fan of it. And if you guys still have not tried this game out and you guys are fans of Konosuba, I definitely would recommend this game. And on top of that, even if you guys are not Konosuba fans, I still would recommend this game just for like all of the reasons that we've talked about in this video already. And so yeah, I think that concludes like my final review of this game over here, Konosuba Fantastic Days. TLDR, I really liked it. I would keep playing it, but I just don't have the space for it in my life right now. And so to everybody who has been sticking around for Konofan videos, like thank you guys so much. But if you guys do choose to stay, I'm not going to stop you, right? You know, you can still hang out and stuff. And so with that being said, let's wrap up this Konofan video one last time. And so I'm going to leave you guys with a secret message. And that secret message is 8.5 out of 10 would play again. Actually, I'm not going to get you guys to drop 8.5 out of 10 into the comments. I want to know what you guys are going to give this. I want to know if you guys are going to keep playing it or if you guys have dropped it. I do want to know that if you guys were willing to rate it, what would you rate it out of 10? 8.5 for me is like pretty insane. Like I, I think it's just because like this kind of game is right up my alley. I know a lot of other people who would not give it past like a 6 or a 6.5, right? But for me personally, I think that it deserves an 8.5, at least like in terms of against all of the other gachas that I've played, especially this year. And so if you guys could drop your answer to that secret question down in the comments below for one last time, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, please consider a like. A s Actually, I cannot ask you guys to subscribe because this is going to be the last of its kind. But instead, I just want to thank you, Conifarm players, for going on this journey with me. And like, oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and so as Rin once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys, hopefully, maybe in the next video. Bye-bye.